So I think I have a way to make some enclosures for only $4 each. What's up, bangers? Today we're going to make a $4 enclosure. Um, you could make it as low as $3, I guess, because you have to buy three of these at the dollar store. And then we're going to cut them up. You can either use tape or you can use silicone. I happen to already have some silicone, so for me, the silicone wasn't an expense, but first, I'm gonna use one of these cutting mats. I'm gonna use scissors that have a sharp point to score the plastic, so let's do that. And to help me get this straight, I like to use some type of ruler. You can see that I used to quilt. Um, that's probably the easiest one to cut first. Cut it as close to the curve as you can, but don't include the curve. Maybe about there. And you can hold it, or you can use clamps, whichever. Did you get these little curlies? You're doing it right. Oh yeah. S snap it. That's pretty clean. Okay, there's a way to get that off. Okay, here's one side. All right, next, I'm gonna score this one. This, I will use the clamps this time. All right, I like it. Now time to score. Oh yeah. That's how we like it. Okay, let's see if this time it snaps better. Nice and clean. Okay, let me fix this other edge. And then cut this one in the same places. <laughs> okay, so one trick I do for this is um, the edges will be kind of rough. And so what I'll do is use the sidewalk as a great big sanding block to just smooth it. And there you go. So I was going to try doing this spider design for my holes, but without the lines, you cannot tell it's a spider. It looks like a snowflake, so no. So I'm going to stick with stars this time around because I like them. Important to note, the plastic paper that coats these, this is the side that has the paper. Do not put the dots on that side because they rub off really easy. And when you're working on your surface and you're putting your holes, if it's rubbing around, you don't want to scratch up your surface. and shiny. There's this very clear tape and there's cheap packing tape that is full of bubbles. Don't buy this tape. Don't use this tape. So I have a cloth that's been dampened with a little rubbing alcohol. That'll take off any sh marker, sharpie marker, and just clean it up. Make it stick together better. I All right, here goes nothing. So these are the sides. I think I'm going to put a strip of tape on each.
Yep, I could have just done that. That would have worked too. But. It's a learning process. Like I said, I just came up with this idea. I haven't done it yet. not shift is when I put the bottom piece on. That's just going to lock it in the rectangle. Now this I'm going to have to cut because this is not going to be correct. The question is, do I want it to fit inside? I think I do. There we go, nice and neat. Make sure that works. Okay, that actually fits pretty good. Let's okay, you want to know the thing that sucks about this? This is supposed to be the top, not the bottom. No one sees the bottom. The extra short piece, there should be a third piece, a third piece that's this size, and two of these can be on the bottom. And then this piece, would be the top. Hopefully, now this will fall down through here. <laughs> no, that could be good. I know that could work. I'm gonna put the magnet. So I have a magnet right here. To the dollar store, so I could get a square magnet. Well, rectangle, hopefully. We're gonna find out in a minute. And this magnet could be super glued to the edge here. And then the lid could have some metal glued, and this will keep it from... Actually, that'll still work. All right, to make the bottom, you take the third small piece, and it will sit down inside, and then you cut this to fill in the difference. As an extra layer of protection and to keep this from flopping around, I glued an extra piece because I had a couple of these extra pieces. So I, not glued, I taped it. I put the piece where the seam was so it wouldn't bend and then taped that on two sides. Nobody's going to see this part, but make sure that this is on top when you drop it down. If you did it right, this should fit perfectly and it's going to keep it square. So I'm taping a strip that goes part way up. And then I'll fold that under and do that all the way around. I decided to redo the what's going to be the front with smaller pieces of tape. So I took it off and moved it over. So just a strip shows. I'll go back and clean this up with a little rubbing alcohol. And then I took my box cutter and shortened it so it's a smaller piece of tape now so it doesn't cover so much. Being these last two sides, I decided to cut these little notches so I could fold both over for extra security. We do not want this coming apart. Okay, for this next part, my thinking is that a single piece of tape as a hinge will wear out very fast. Uh, so, I'm going to try to get creative here and do this in layers. Um, I've got a piece of old, huh, this was for labeling CDs. I'm never going to do that. So I ripped the cover off and I'm using that waxy paper. It's more solid than kitchen wax paper. So hopefully you find something like that. And I'm just going to do about maybe three or four layers of this tape. Oh, I can hear those crickets. They drive me crazy. I've got a nice thick hand. Cut it in a nice shape, which you probably should have done on a curve, but oh, yeah. let's make another one. I might take the other one up if this works better. Okay, so if I take my time more, I could get all the bubbles out of this, but 
uh, we're heading out to go camping, so I don't want to hurry up and get this video loaded up for you guys. There's my lid. Hopefully that's on camera. Now I gotta make some kind of latch. I had a couple ideas. That fourth dollar could be the magnet. So the magnet could get glued right here. And all I have to do is put something metal or another magnet there and boom, that stays closed all the time. And it will keep it from falling through. So that's one way to do it. Yeah, that would work. It's got that edge from the serrated part. Okay, now the lid does not go all the way through. What could I use for metal? Got some extras of this. Oh yeah, that's a strong one. <clears throat> well, let's see. <laughs> I'm totally winging this. Like I said, it just hit me and I'm filming the process. I don't even know if this is going to work. But, if you're watching it, I guess it did. Put it this way, right over the magnet. Oh yeah, that's pretty, pretty strong. I think a spider could push that up. Plus it's heavy. All right, so I've got just a little bit of a lip to grab right here. Pretty those up a little. Ta-da! Okay, dirt. So of course you could uh, order some acrylic hinges and glue those on. Get a nice little latch that locks um, and make it a lot more fancy than this. But this, three bucks. If you don't count that I bought the pot and the magnet. So really it was five bucks. This was five bucks, but without the magnet and if I used uh, something I already had, three dollars. And look at that, this is the front. I can put it up on my shelf. I'll be able to see my little guy. I did attempt a silicone version and it looks terrible. Um, I was trying to save a buck and bought this stuff, which two days later, it's still tacky. I should have bought this and used a caulking gun like this. And in the future, I will do a good one with good silicone, and you'll see that on a future video. Now I've got these lines on my face from the safety glasses.